levels of dasha. How many levels are there? Six. What do the six different dashas mean? Five. Five? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Aren't there five levels? Six. six. What are the six levels? Come on, Pisa. <laughs> Maha Dasha, Andhra Dasha, Pratyantar Dasha, Sukshma, Prana, and Deha. Sukshma. Yeah, I know there's a Sukshma. <laughs> Which one is the Sukshma? Second to the last. Prana is the last one. The breath no. one. Is Prana is second to last. Deha is Deha's last. the last. They have his body, doesn't it? Are you in this room or are you in your car? The moment you get into your car from this room, your Deha Antardasha changes. Oh. The minute you get up to get your coffee, tea. Your, your tea, the Deha Antardasha <laughs> changed. And it's a different one sitting down. Oh. That's how the, the Deha Antardasha was very minute. Okay? Very hard to get down to that level. Most important, le the, the, as at the level that we are at here, we want to pay attention to the first three levels. The last three levels, that's advanced Jyotish. And it's important to eventually understand that. But first, most important is to understand how to interpret the first three. And so we already mentioned, what's the karaka for the first, for the Mahadasha? What plant? Sun. Sun. And the karaka for the Antardasha? Yeah. Yeah. What about for the Pratyantardasha? Don't know. Mars. Mm. Mercury. It changes for for, depending on the Uni Dasha. Uh -huh. no. mm, karaka. Oh. Just in general. Mm -hmm. Does it go by the natural order of the days of the week? Does it go by the Namshetri order? Does it go by the Oregon solar system? Uh, what makes life possible? Which planets make life possible? Venus. The Sophic planets. The Sophic planets. And what are the Sophic planets? Sun, Moon, and Jupiter. Sun, Moon, and Jupiter. <laughs> the, the tripod of life that make life possible. Yeah, but Rahu makes life possible. Yeah. Rahu... Causes rebirth. Causes rebirth. <laughs> <laughs> Without Rahu, we wouldn't be here. Rahu locks us into being here. <laughs> Rahu's the jailer who's trapped us here. <laughs> so what does Pratyantar mean? Uh, Antar means internal. Pratyantar <laughs> is the next inside level. Oh, so it just means next inside level. Yeah, it's like that next, in, the internal of the internal. Okay. And then it's the internal of the internal. And then shukshma means subtle. It's the subtle. And prana, the, the breath level. It's working on the different koshas of the body. Guess what name uh, Muni Raj gave me when I was in Paris? Huh? Sukshma. Nice. Isn't that nice? It doesn't seem to fit you too well, but... <laughs> <laughs> You're far from subtle. You know how sometimes they, they'll na give you a name like a Buddhist name. Jack up got a, what's the name for discipline? Sultrim. Yeah, Sultrim, because he has no discipline at all. So they give you the name of what, you know, is, I guess, needing, needed, what's needed, or what's, what's maybe potential or underneath your appearance. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of times we give a name uh, that is, is, is what's possible for them. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. And for when I went to Hairplan, I had just retired from bodybuilding. So I was huge. <laughs> I mean, I was. And he named you subtle. And he named me Sukshma. <laughs> and all the Indian guys were constantly feeling me up. <laughs> well, that's Indian. They couldn't I mean. keep their hands off my arms. <laughs> it was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> you, were, you, were you were big. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so six levels of dasha. So the tripod of life is sun, moon, and Jupiter. Tripod of life, the three sattvic planets. They make everything possible. The sun, the atma, 
the moon, the mind, and Jupiter, the intelligence, the lagna, the decision maker. So the Mahadasha is showing solar qualities. What does the sun give us? The sun gives us the sun signs, right? What do the sun signs show us? My fourth house, it's ruled by Virgo. I have a front yard that has all kinds of garden, you know, it's a big garden, my front yard. Mm -hmm. If my fourth house was Aquarius, I'd be living in an apartment building. Because <laughs> my front yard would be a skyscraper. So the signs are giving us the situation, the resources. They say the resource is available. The resources are the fact, can I go and can I grow an, an almond tree outside? If that's the resources available, I'll have almonds. So the situation and resources available, the situation is seen by the Mahadasha. So that Mahadasha is setting up what's the situation that you're in. The Antardasha is the moon. What is your mental state? How are you arranging yourself for that situation? What is your goal and focus in that situation? What do you do with that situation? Right? Make sense? Moon? Easy to remember, right? Mm -hmm. And Jupiter, the intelligence. How your intelligence is working. What decisions you're making. Are you choosing to work hard or are you choosing to be lazy? Are you choosing to go on vacation? Are you choosing? What are you choosing? What are the choices being made? So those are the three levels of the dasha. So in general, because Mahadasha is connected to Sun, if we look at the Mahadasha not only from the Lagna, but also from the Sun, to see how good are those resources going to be. For the Antardashas, we don't look at them primarily from the Moon, but what is another point that's lunar energy in the chart? Very important part point of lunar energy. The fourth house. Mm. Aruta Lagna. Mm. So the Antardasha is very important to see where that planet is placed from the Aruta Lagna. Mm. That placement from Aruta Lagna is going to show you what society is perceiving you as and how you're interacting with other people. So in that dasha. So the, you're saying the Antar Dasha Lord, where it's placed from the Aruta Lagna? Antar Dasha Lord, where it's placed from the Aruta Lagna. That's right. Hmm. Wow. And Pratyantar Dasha, because it's Karaka is Jupiter, we only w look at that from Lagna. Because that's showing us where our decisions are being made mm -hmm. and in what direction our decisions are being made. If you remember Sun, Moon, Jupiter, it becomes very easy to remember those three levels of Dasha. Otherwise, I can tell you lots of things about them and you'll forget. Mm -hmm. Remember Sun, Moon, and Jupiter, you'll remember. So if someone's moon is strong in the chart, then then you'll probably have a better ability to predict, let's say you're looking at the Antardasha Lord, to predict from the Aruta Lagna or from the Moon, either way. Um, what do you mean? Give you, you'll be able to see things better. Whether you can see into the chart or not, <coughs> how strong your Sun and Jupiter are. Mm -hmm. If you have good, strong Sun and Jupiter and Rashi and Navamsha, you'll be able to see. Mm -hmm. So I'm depressed already. <laughs> 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 no depression. It's just what level. So when you're looking at someone, how, how famous they are and, and their social recognition and all that kind of stuff, you're looking at Antardasha level. Mm -hmm. Emotions, you're looking at Antardasha level. Even sleep, how well they're sleeping. Mm -hmm. 
you're looking at Antar Dasha level. Health. Which one are we going to look at for health? Which, Which level? Sun. Sun. Why sun? Perfect health. Because sun represents health. So we look at the Maha Dasha. It's going to show us the general health significations of the Dasha. Becomes very important. Emotional health changes a lot faster than physical health, doesn't it? You see that in the Dasha. Wait, which Dasha? You mean the emotional in the fact health? that yeah, there is Maha Dasha and Antar Dasha. Which one changes faster? Okay. Physical health or, or emotional mental health? But you see how that's revealed in the Dasha. Okay, everybody get those three levels of dasha? Mm -hmm. Now the secret's going to be applying it all. Because <laughs> now we're starting to stack all these techniques up. But the important thing is, is I'm putting them in an order here. Mm -hmm. Of the most primary, and then getting more and more intricate. So if you're starting to get confused, if at this point this is getting to be too much, to say, okay, learn it, let it go into your subconscious mind, it's here for you to refer back to, but start from technique number one. St then technique number two, then technique number three. Go in that order. Don't try and jump here and forget the first technique. Okay, because those first techniques are your foundation. If you go with them, you can always be somewhat right. You'll, always be, you'll be somewhat right. It might not be 100%, but you'll be somewhat right. If you go to this, you can be totally wrong. But if you get the first part right and use this to refine, then you can be spot on. You can be exact. I had a woman once, and I can't believe she complained. I predicted that she would have a relation. She said, I mean, this is a woman who her husband left her 15 years previous. And she probably hadn't had a date in five to six years. And she said, you know, I'm, I'm lonely. I want a relationship. I predicted that it was probably six or seven months from the reading. I said, in July, and I gave her a date. I said, you'll have a relationship starting at this time. I mean, I gave her a day. <laughs> and you, you already see how like there's some day variation happening there, right? <laughs> I gave her just some, you know, like the day. To get spot on the day with Vimshotri, there's a slight variation of a few days. Did you give her the latitude and longitude? <laughs> <laughs> I gave her the day that she would have a relationship. How are you so sure? To the chart. All these techniques, if you add everything up. she wanted, That was her main question. If I have a, a reading in an hour and the person has 30 questions, you know, I'm going to be 60% on all of them. If the person has like two questions for an hour, uh -huh. I can be spot on because I can take all the time to get spot on. Uh -huh. She complained that I was one day off. Oh. <laughs> She said, yeah, your prediction, he came in July, but you were off by a day. <laughs> and she said it in a derogatory way. But so these finer detail techniques are all about fine-tuning and detail. To be able to say, but if you can at least say, oh, you're going to be very artistic this time, and it's going to be a better time for more art, because you know it's Venus, Dasha. You'll be right. So more general is easier to be correct. And if you notice, we start it much more general. Now we're getting into the difference between the mind and the body, and we're getting into very minor details. We even, at the Pratyantara Dasha, we're seeing how they're making their decision versus how they're emotionally feeling versus what their situation is. So we're getting very specific. Where at the beginning, we're just talking about there's more artistic things happening in their life, or it's a more spiritual time in their life. It's very general. So we got to progress slowly up. So just remember that. Start from the, the first techniques listed here. Okay, number 10. Tenth technique, Graha Drishti. And this is hierarchically the... It's a relative hierarchy. Okay. Because depending on the question the person wants to know, you know, sometimes you can move them one or two this way. So but this, I did my best thinking this out to be put it in the, you know. Okay. 
Like if you're going to sit there and look at a dasha and you want to just fully know what that dasha does and you sit there and you go through these systematically like this, you'll be able to get everything that dasha is going to give in general. Going in this order. You'll hit almost all corners. Number 10 is graha drishti. What's the graha drishti of a dasha show? Let's say, um, what's your dasha again? Saturn. Saturn. So where Saturn aspecting in your chart? Saturn, it's aspecting in uh, houses. Which fifth houses? House, fifth house. The ninth house. Ninth um, house. And the twelfth house. And the twelfth. What's that mean? Jeez, it's really hard for me to think sometimes. <laughs> uh, very hard for me to find a guru. <laughs> and my mother's gonna die or did die. So it's it, it's aspecting my moon right when I was going through Sadi Sakti. My mother passed away and um What's Graha Drishti in general show? Consciousness, the, the, the what of the planet? The desire of the planet. The desire of the planet. What the planet wants. So Saturn aspecting the fifth, he's also going to show want for working with your intelligence. Yes. So you're not going to be able to just go bodybuilding because you want to use your mind. Yeah. Ninth house, a want for spirituality. <laughs> And 12th house, a need for some time alone. But he's a, he'll also disturb sleep by aspecting it. Sounds like yoga too. <laughs> <laughs> so in this way, the aspects of the planet show what the planet's desiring, what the planet is wanting to get in its dasha. What's your, uh, your, your dasha right now is? Moon. Moon. So moon has what aspect? Moon has only one aspect. Seventh house. So what's seventh house from the moon? That would be your uh, Saturn and uh, Kepler. And your ninth house. <laughs> Say that again, right? Saturn and Kepler. So moon Mahadasha, your, your, your main one is really to perfect your Chud practice. Hmm. And really get the results from that. We see, you know, I could sit there and say it wants ninth house, but what's that ninth house giving? It's giving us chud practice there. This Basashta Bada combination in, in the ninth house. The spirituality of spirit. That's really interesting. And the moon Mahadasha, it's fully, it wants to perfect that. It wants to get the results. Does that feel right? Um, yeah. <laughs> but so, and, and, and not what I'm doing. But that's what the dasha wants. Oh, so if you're not doing what the dasha wants, then you're starting to find well, out. We'll, we'll talk in a, in a minute about breaking down the dasha okay. in the three parts. So. Okay. Where are you in the dasha? How far through? I don't remember. Moon what? Um, to, to 2010, so about... Halfway. Yeah, more or less. Okay, so you're in the middle third. We divided it into three. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk about it in a minute. What about, I know it's not Graha Drishti, but what about the location of Saturn? Will it also, that, will that be relevant too? Saturn will desire. Yeah, yes, Dana Stiti, it's the second most important oh. thing. Okay. It was the number two. Okay, so it's way more important the, than Graha Yeah, Drishti. This, this, the, the natural signification of Saturn, the placement of Saturn, then its strength. Those are the first three things that we're, we're looking at. This is coming farther down the line. You know, we're at number 10, so it's much farther down the line. So it will desire the things of the location of Saturn. It's what it wants, yeah. Yeah, where it is. But what it is is showing what it's giving, <clears throat> okay. what its situation is. Stana, he's sitting on a green mat right now. Mm -hmm. That's his situation. He's looking over here at the teacher. He wants to he wants to learn what I'm teaching. Okay? So that's that's his situation. What what he's his situation is in. What he's looking at is what he wants. So that's how the planets are, are acting. Okay. Um, 
The next section is Argila, and it's 4 o'clock. So I'm not going to go too into Argila today. I thought about going into Argila, but we had a whole six-hour class on Argila once. And it's online and downloadable. And it's one of these ones, Parashar teaches Argila at the same time he teaches Arudas. And I should have probably taught it at the time of Arudas, but there's only so much time. Um, Is it downloadable? Yeah, it's downloadable. That one's online. And uh, were you here for that class? Argila, I think you were here for that class. And we talked about how to use um, Argila in, in the Dasha, and there's a slight little write-up on that. But I don't want to go too into that. But at this point, we begin to use Argila in the Dasha. And so once you master all this, it's the next teaching on utilizing Argila in the Dasha is available online. And I think, yeah. And is this generally when you use Argila is when you're analyzing the results of the Dasha? Mm, no. Um, Argila is used in two cases. Mm -hmm. One, to see the nature of the person in general. And to differentiate the nature from the, the person's, um, how, who the person is mm -hmm. on an external level versus an internal level versus on a social level. That's how we're really utilizing Argila. Because we're you looking at Argila, we're looking at it from the Lugna. What's that person's personality like? For example, let's just do third and sixth house Argilas. The third house, benefits there, make the person very gentle. Malefics there make the person very harsh in getting what they want. Okay? So if it's from the Lagna, if benefits are there, the person's very soft. That's their natural personality. If there is malefics there, they're very harsh at getting what they want. If we go from the Atmakarka and the Navamsha, that's why I haven't covered it, because we haven't talked too much about Atmakarka and the Navamsha yet, for the beginners. But from there, we're looking at what the soul's natural tendency is. That Atma inside, what's the quality of the soul? Is the soul really trying to get what the soul wants, or is the soul pretty beneficial, beneficent and you know, very gentle in its nature? And the combination, we see how the soul combines with the personality. Because the soul is, is, is an external being that karmically is born into this body and mind based on its karmas. But bottom line is the soul is going through different bodies and in different bodies and minds it has different situations. So what are the, um, what's the emotional reality? What's, or what's the emotional? What's the character of the soul? And then what's the character of the body and mind it's taken? So we look at that from the Atmakarka and the Navamsha and the Lagna. And then how does a person act in society? And how does society perceive him? We look at the Argila from the Aruta Lagna. So if third house from the Aruta Lagna, there's a benefic, then people will think they're a nice, gentle person. But if from the Lagna there's a malefic, then they're really a pretty harsh, they grab and they take what they want. They work, you know, they're very harsh, person, you know, to get what they want, but people perceive them as gentle. You can also have the opposite situation where there's benefics from the Lagna and malefics from the Aruta Lagna. So the person is perceived as being harsh, but it's really pretty gentle. Mm -hmm. So Argila we use to see the difference between those three points and to really understand the difference between those realities. Now in Dasha, we're also using it to interpret what the Dasha Lord wants. What that time in our life is wanting. If we look at the third house from the Dasha Lord, is it a time where we're really harshly getting things or is it a time where we're being more gentle? Are there benefics third from the Dasha Lord or are there malefics third from the Dasha Lord? Are there more planets in the second or more planets in the twelfth from the Dasha Lord? So we begin to utilize it in that way. As well, especially with Vimshotri Dasha, um, let's say he's running Moon Mahadasha. So Moon is a very gentle planet. Moon is in what house? Um, third. third house. So that's third from the Lugna. So from the Lugna, so it's a, it's a period where he's going very gentle about getting what he wants. 
He's not aggressively getting what he wants because it's third from the lugna. Mm -hmm. But let's say it was. Um, but, but can what he wants be gotten through women? I mean, is it is the same way? Not in no. the. It's generally. Okay. You can slightly, but that's kind of pulling a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it is possible to interpret that, to go that far. Mm -hmm. um, Let's say he had a, or let's take another example. Um, do I want to go to a different person or just say, let's, let's say his moon was in the um, fifth house. In the fifth house, it's having third house Argila from the third house. So it means his brothers are being very gentle. Okay? So we see what houses that planet is giving Argila to for Vimshotri Dasha. So it refines the Dasha in that way. So those are the two main things to use. And that's probably, did you get any of that? <laughs> it's going in there subconsciously working. The result is so it becomes a very important house that you're going to be experiencing during the dasha. The dasha. Anubhava. The dasha anta dasha. Yeah. So it's the relationship between. It's the relationship between the two. Okay, so experience that anta dasha. Because her next dasha after after Rahu Saturn is going to be. Mm -hmm. What's your next dasha? Rahu Neptune. <laughs> and what about after that? That's right. So after that, she's going to be, where's Mercury? Right there. So it's to seven, and then back to seven. So her next, the jiva's going to be there. Wow. And then when we get to uh, um, K2, and then again for K2, uh, for Rahu K2, it's going to be the same. So it's always 10 times. And then Rahu Venus, it's going to be, where's Venus? Right there. So it's going to be. Nine, and then nine. So the jiva will be in the second house. So at this point, she's going to start experiencing that she hasn't been saving enough money. Mm -hmm. And she's going to start thinking about how she can save more money and, and manifest a little bit more monetary means. Wow. It's going to be some, she's going to be experiencing what the situation with her second house is. Okay? So it's just where the mind is getting the... What's your force? Because, I mean, you can never, there's parts of our life that we never look at. We just don't deal with. It's just like, ah, I don't want to deal with that aspect of my life. Or, you know, the person's in a relationship and they don't want to deal with it. Or they're not in a relationship and they don't want to deal with it, the fact that they're not in a relationship. Okay. All of a sudden, the jiva goes to the seventh house. They're like, wow, I'm not in a relationship. I should be in a relationship. Or I shouldn't, or you know, whatever it is. Or, so. so the jiva is showing where the experience, where this awareness is, is going in a dasha. Mm -hmm. Because it's the sun and the moon. And the sun and the moon are reflecting each other. That's the jiva. Whew, gochara. What's our time? Let's take a small break. You guys look like small breaks. Stretch the legs. Then we'll talk about gochara. Ashtaka Varga and Navtara. Oh, wow.